We want to welcome you to First Missionary Baptist Mountville. We have come to worship the name of our risen Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him, for he is worthy to be praised. Forget about your problems, for God is bigger than your problems. So let's worship his holy name. So we just want to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise, for God is worthy to be praised. So we just want to thank you for having us on your mind this morning. Thank you for stopping by our platforms, because we just want to worship God in the spirit and in truth. So we just thank you today for your presence. We thank you for uh, stopping by. And we just want to worship God together for where two or three are gathered in his name, touching and agreeing, God is there in the midst. As we uh, conduct ourselves, we want to continue to uh, follow the CDC guidelines. Uh, we want to wear the mask. We want to watch our distance, distance and wash our hands. We want to continue to do those things, even though the numbers are trending down. But we want to continue to help them trend down so that we can come out of this with our hands up. The Congress of Christian Education is gearing up for the week of March 21st. Monday, we'll begin with foreign mission at 6 p.m., then the Congress proceeding the next few days. So we want to ask that you place that on your calendar. There are many who are sick among us. There are many that are dealing with difficult problems. Uh, the list can get long, but God's mercy is longer. For God's mercy abounds, and we can never run out of his grace. So there are so many things that we can do, but one of the greatest things that we can do, we can pray. There is power in prayer. Little prayer, little power, much prayer, there's much power. But no prayer, there's no power. There's nothing too hard for God, for with God, all things are possible. So as we come before God's throne this morning, we want to pray for God's power, his protection, and his provision in our lives. And as I pray this morning, we ask that you will pray silently, for God hears and God understands even when we do not have the words to say. So we want to continue to lift up those on our sick and shut-in and special prayer list. We have listed Sister Ola Rogers, Sister Eva Lou James, Sister Peggy Sanders, Sister Stella Spence, Sister Mary Holly, Sister Shonda Prescott, Brother Billy Morris. We want to remember the Payne family and their hour of bereavement. We want to continue to lift up the families of Sawyerville, uh, Brother Tommy Wilson in Tennessee. We want to lift up the Harris family, the Poole family, uh, the Davis family. And we want to lift up all of those who are present, all those who are tuned in in social media land, and all those uh, we can stand and intercede on behalf. Let us bow before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we just come this morning just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for being an awesome and a magnificent God. Lord, you are God and you are God all alone. Lord, you in your own right spoke the word and you spoke the world in to existence. You said, let there be, and there was. Lord, it was you who scooped us from the earth, formed us with your fingers, 
and breathe the breath of life in us so that we can become a living soul. It was Lord, it is you who put the cosmos in the skies. It was you who painted the skies with the stars and you put the lights in it, the sun and the moon. Lord, it was you and you alone. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we just thank you that we can stand in awe of your presence. We thank you that even though you're everywhere, you're right here uh, with us to give us some significant special time. Lord, we know that when we bow before you, Lord, you incline your ear toward us. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we just thank you for what you've done, Lord. You've done so much for us that we just cannot tell it all. Lord, you woke us up this morning. You gave us our health and our strength. You gave us the mind to want to come into your house to worship you one more time. It's not because of our goodness, but because you are good, and you are good all the time. Lord, we thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank and praise you enough for what you've done in our lives. How many doors you opened. Lord, how many enemies you have set at bay. Lord, how many problems you have fixed for us even before we ask. Lord, we just can't thank you enough for all that you have done. Lord, we just come before you. Lord, bound before your presence, placing the needs of all those who are on the sick and shut in list before you. Lord, we know that you know them name by name. And Lord, we know that you can have a fix for and a solution for what they are having a problem with. Lord, we know that sometimes we make our problems bigger than you. But Lord, you are bigger and you are greater than everything. For you don't have some power, but you have all power. So we lift up these names to you this morning. Lord, some of them are, are suffering in the hospital. But, Lord, we know that you are there. Lord, some of them are in their homes. But, Lord, we know that you are there. Lord, that some of them have experienced loss. But, Lord, we know that you are with them, for you said that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we know that there are some who said the doctors have shaken their head. But, Lord, we know that you are the great physician, and you've never lost a patient. Lord, you can speak a word. Lord, you can touch them from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet, and they'll be made whole again. And Lord, even if they die, Lord, you can call their name, and they'll have to rise. Lord, we just come this morning placing them before you this morning. Lord, we just come, Lord, lifting up those who may be viewing, those who are in our presence. Lord, there are many needs, but Lord, you are the only solution. We ask that you would just give them a financial blessing. Lord, they may have more month than they have money. But, Lord, you, we know that you are rich uh, you, with all houses and land. All the silver and the gold belong to you. Lord, we know the cattle on the th thousand hills belong to you. And then when we get tired of counting all the cattle, we can just count the hills. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and them and they that dwell therein. Lord, we just come, Lord, placing their needs before you. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would touch their bodies. Lord, we ask that you would heal them and you, you would set them free. Lord, we ask that you would move on their jobs, move in their homes, move in the school system. Lord, we ask that you would, Lord, just touch the hearts of our politicians. Lord, we ask that you would go abroad and bless those and touch those who are uh, at war. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just move and let your power be felt. Lord, we know that we can just come to you with anything. For you have the, the final solution and you have the final say. Lord, we know that there are many things going on in our world, but you gave us the solution. You said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Lord, we just come, Lord, asking for your forgiveness. Lord, we know that there are many things that we've done amiss. Lord, there are many things that we've done wrong. But Lord, we ask that you will forgive us right now. Lord, you said that all unrighteousness is sin. And all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. 
But Lord, we know that you can cleanse us. You can wash us. You can make us whole. You can create within us a clean heart and renew within us the right spirit. Lord, we ask that you would touch right now, Lord. Lord, make us better today than we were yesterday. And Lord, if we see tomorrow, make us better tomorrow than we were today. That every day we put on more of you and less of ourselves. We pray for this church. We pray for every church that's open in your name. Lord, we pray for each member. Lord, we pray for those who desire to become members. We ask that you would just move in their situations right now. Ask that you would bless our leadership. Ask that you would bless our pastor and meritors. Lord, we pray that you would bless me, Lord, and to lead and guide and direct as you see fit. Lord, we ask that you would bless everyone that stands behind the sacred desk to proclaim your word where your word will not come back void. But Lord, we ask that you will be with us during these services, during this broadcast, that we won't leave the same way that we came. We just thank you, Lord. We forever praise your name. We glorify and we magnify your holy name. For this we ask in your son Jesus' name, and for his sake, let every heart say, Amen. want to invite your attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. That's Luke 15, beginning at verse 8 and ending at verse 10. And it reads as follows. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she have found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had like lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I've read unto your hearing from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. May God have blessed to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. At this time, the praise team will come, and they will render us a few selections.
some of us were unlovable in man's eyes, but God loved us in spite of. And we should be saying, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. And I thank God for Jesus. And when he loves us, nothing can separate us from that love. No matter how high we go, no matter how low we fall, nothing can separate us from his love. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Amen. We greet you in the name of Christ who does all things well. Again, we want to thank you for having First Baptist on your mind. We want to thank the praise team for those beautiful selections. Thank the musicians and also the media ministry. We want to thank all of you again for helping us lift up the name of Jesus. From the previous verses of scripture that I read into your hearing from Luke 15 verses 8 through 10. I'll read them again. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she have found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And just for a few minutes, we want to preach from the subject, Christ, Swiffers, and Sweets. Christ, Swiffers, and Sweets. In the month of March, many people's mindset is that of spring cleaning. Meteorologically, spring is the first day of March. But chronologically on the calendar, spring is just around the corner. This is the time in which we get rid of all the rubbish. This is the time in which we spruce up that which has lost its sparkle. This is the time in which we cut back that which has cultivated out. This is the time in which we dust off that which has laid dormant. This is the time in which we wash that which has become drab and dirty. This is the time in which we clean up all of the clutter. In other words, this is the time in which we swiffer and sweep because to some, spring is already here and to some, spring is on the way. Sometimes in the midst of swiffering and sweeping, we are surprised to discover some things under the dirt. We turn up treasures that have been trapped. We excavate equity that had been entrenched. We reveal riches that had been repressed. When we swiffer and sweep, when we clear out the clutter, sometimes we become lucky to locate things that were lost. My brothers and sisters, there is nothing like finding something precious that you have lost. Isn't it dynamite when you find that diamond that fell out of your ring or even finding your ring? Isn't it great 
when you find that gift card that you thought you left on the kitchen counter? Isn't it cheerful when you find that car key that had been covered up? It's kind of crazy when you find coins that fell from the cushions on the couch when you swiffer and sweep, but it does make you smile. It makes you jump for joy. It makes you ecstatic with exuberance. It makes you sing and shout when something you thought that may be lost forever is found. How much more joy should we have when something that is lost, that is found while swiffering and sweeping, is a soul? We should feel about someone's soul like we feel about our stuff. We don't want any to be lost. Everyone's soul should be so precious to us that we want no one to perish. Our ultimate goal should be like God's goal. God does not want any to perish or to be lost. God himself goes through great lengths to recover the lost. This morning, we find our text is nestled and nested in the nook and crannies of this parable of Jesus that he gives about things that are lost. The ones who were considered outsiders and outcasts, the tax collectors and sinners, drew close to him while those who were in their own minds safe and secure, or I dare I say church folk, criticize and complain. Because Jesus knows our thoughts before we think them to combat those who, and, and to contest those that criticize and complain, Jesus gives these parables which shows at great lengths the God's love towards the lost. He begins with the parable of the lost sheep, and he concludes with the parable of the lost son. But right smack dab in the center, it contains a parable of a woman who swiffers and sweets. This woman had misplaced a coin and sets out on a mission to find it. This coin could have been part of a piece of jewelry, such as a necklace or a bracelet. The coin in our text was probably a silver drachma. And although the word drachma is derived from the verb to grasp, somehow this silver coin has slipped her grip. She started with 10 silver coins, and now she is left with nine. Now, to some of us, this might not seem so significant, for the total value of one drachma may have been a day's wages. But to this woman, coins and cash were a rare commodity, as she probably was a poor peasant. She probably was accustomed to making her own clothes, and she was used to growing her own food, which makes the loss of this precious coin and the loss of any cash that much more of a concern. My brothers and sisters, even if the coin did not have any monetary value, it still was priceless to her because it was her possession. Although she may have lost possession of it, she still maintained the rights. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we get careless with our change. How many times have we knowingly dropped a penny, a nickel, a dime, or a quarter, and then saw it and kept on walking? If it's not in volume, sometimes we do not place any value on it. Although it may have little face value, there is still someone's face on it. Do we not realize the painful process 
that someone has to go through to have their image inscribed on a coin. Let me ask you this question. If it was your face, would you want someone to lose it? Let that sink for just a little while. This woman has somehow lost this silver coin, her prized possession. She left it somewhere in the house. So she decides to swiffer and sweep in order to search for this silver coin. Houses in that day, they were usually one room, small, and they were very dark. They were dark because sometimes they did not have windows, and when they did have windows, they were small slits, and they were high upon the walls. Therefore, there was no or little natural light in the house. The floor was not high-quality hardwoods either, but probably just packed down powdered earth. She wants to start swiffering and sweeping, but it is difficult to do this in the dark. It's so easy to drop things in the dark where we, it cannot be determined where they are. So the first thing that she has to do before she starts swiffering and sweeping is to shine some light so that she can see. Things look a lot different in the darkness than they do in the light. In the darkness, we are blind, and we may bump into things that we normally would go around in the light. We may stumble over some things and even stub our toe in the dark when in the light we would just walk around. In darkness, we are blinded, but in the light, we can see, and now we can focus. She lights a candle to shed some light on her situation. Now that she can see, she can see things that need to be picked up before you can swiffer and sweep. She can see th the things that need to be slid out of the way. She can shift around things that need to be moved. She can throw or toss out that which is determined to be trash. Once she can see clearly, now she can swiffer and sweep. Now to some, swiffering and sweeping are the same thing, but to me, it is not. I had to use that analogy somehow to catch some of the younger people's attention because some of them never had to use a broom to sweep, but may have used a swiffer. When you swiffer, it can be a two-stage process. Stage one, uses a dry cloth that attacks and picks up dust, dirt, and even pet hair from the floor. Stage two, comes back with a wet cloth that cleans the dirt and the stain. Now, Swiffer may work, and it may work well in our modern homes, but there is nothing like sweeping with a stiff straw broom. With a stiff straw broom, you can systematically sweep the dirt and the dust. You can bend the bristles to canvas the corners, the cracks, and the crevices. You can reach up or down and clear the cobwebs. With a step saw broom, you can scrub and scrape any and every surface. With a step straw broom, you can whisk and you can work, you can work around the dirt and the dust. Now I don't know if you swept the dirt, she swept the dirt and the dust. Uh, out the door, or she had some kind of makeshift dustpan like we used to do. But whatever the case, she kept on swiffering and sweeping. As she was swiffering and sweeping, she was constantly searching for the lost silver coin. 
she kept old, swept over and under any and every surface. She swept over and under the mats that she had laid down. She moved the pottery and the planters, and she kept on swiffering and sweeping. It seems like she swiffered and swept all over, but she still couldn't find no silver. She kept on searching, and she kept on sweeping. She kept on sweeping, and she kept on searching. Searching and sweeping, sweeping and searching, until at last she saw a sparkle, and she found it. She shouted for joy. She shared with her neighbors. She shared with her friends. The coin that I had lost, it is now found. They shouted with her, her friends and her neighbors. They rejoiced with her because probably she had started her search with them in the first place. When she first lost her silver coin, she did not know if she lost it in the house or outside of the house. Many times the things that we think that we are lost on the outside of the house are really right under our nose, hidden in plain sight. That's why we as the saints of God must be careful and not complain about who is lost on the outside of the house. We cannot complain and we cannot criticize because we on the inside may be the ones who are lost. We should be shouting when sinners are saved. We should be shouting when they are secured in God's everlasting arms. Instead of criticizing and complaining, we should be shouting and singing. Instead of surveying the dirt on others' doorstep, we need to swiffer and sweep around the doorstep of our own. We should be shouting because as saints of God, others joy. Another's joy should be our joy. Their God should be our God. We should be shouting because what was lost is now found. Now this morning, I want to be just like this woman who was in this text. I want to be shouting because what was lost is now found. And I'm shouting this morning because I know how ladies feel about their lost silver. But more importantly, I'm shouting because I know how the Lord feels about our lost soul. One day, I was lost. I was one of his lost coins, but he swiffered and he swept the house until I was found. He shined on me his own light as he did not need a candle. He himself is the light of the world, and his light dispels all darkness. I was swept away in my sin. Sin took me further than I wanted to go. Sin kept me longer than I wanted to stay. Sin cost me more than I was willing to pay. I was covered in dirt and darkness. I was buried deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master extended his long handle of mercy, took the stiff straw brush of salvation. He swiffered and he swept and he searched for me until I was found. He removed the cobweb of wickedness from around me. He swiffered and swept me out of the corner of corruption. I may have been worthless to some, but I was priceless to him. He swiffered and he swept. He scrubbed and he scraped. He rubbed and he removed the ink of iniquity off of me 
because his image and his description was upon me. And I'm shouting today because once I was lost, but now I am found. And I'm so glad this morning that Christ swiffers and he sweeps. Christ seeks and he saves. Christ loves and loves the lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Christ is constantly swiffering and sweeping. Christ is shining his light and he is searching for you. He was swiffer and he was sweet. He was sweeping the nooks and the crannies. He was swiffer and he was sweet in all the cracks and the crevices. He was swiffer and he was sweet through all the dirt and the dust. And he would do this just for you. You are the one who he is searching for. You are the one who is valuable to him. You are the one whose image is an inscription is upon. Come let him place you in his crown. You ought to give your life to Christ because he is seeking, he is searching, he is swiffering, and he is sweeping just for you. Give your life to him. You may be worthless to some, but you are valuable to him. And you are so valuable to him that he laid down his life just for you and just for me. He went up on a hill called Calvary, hung, bled, and died for you and for me. He bled and he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder just for you and just for me. He died a treacherous death. He died until all was satisfied. He died until the demons began to dance. And we know that they thought they were going to lay him in a dirty tomb. But when they got there early that third day morning, he had already swiffered and he already swept it clean because when they got there, no dirt was there and he was not there either. For he rose that third day morning with all power in his hand. Who can sweep the world of all his dirt and all of his dust? Only the swiffer and the sweet, sweet broom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. You can go into the corners of the world, but he'll find you there. You can go into the deep, dark valleys, and he will find you there. There's nowhere where you can try to hide and make your bed that Christ is not already there. You may find yourself in some entangled in the cobweb, but the sweet, still straw of mercy will sweep you out. You may find yourself in a den of dirty iniquity, but the, the still straw brush of mercy will bring you out. Christ died for us. Christ resurrected for us. Christ is swiffering and sweeping all over the land to find you and to find me. If you were the only one, he still would swiffer and sweep until he finds you. He searches all over, but he finds each and every one. So become a part of his crown. Become a part of his jewelry. Let his inscription be on you and you be in his picture book of life. And so God wants us to become a part of his family. Christ swiffers and he sweeps. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were all lost, but God sent for us. God searched for us. He swept for us so that we can become 
saved, and on our way to heaven. We are valuable. We are more valuable than we ever know. Many times we have low self-esteem, but we should have high self-esteem, not considering ourselves higher than we ought to, but know who we are in Christ. We are the head and not the tail. We can be the lender and not the borrower. We are above and not beneath. That's because of our status in Christ Jesus. His image is upon us. His inscription is upon us. So we are valuable to him. And even if we are worthless to some, God places more value on each and every one of us. Whether we are lost inside the house, whether we are lost outside the house, God is swiffering and sweeping for each and every one to become part of his house. And when he comes, comes and saves us, the angels in heaven, they rejoice over one sinner. They have a big party over one sinner. Many people will have March Madness parties, but what do you think about the heavenly party over one sinner? You give your life to Christ, you're going to be the guest because they're going to celebrate because you gave your life. One sinner. What about two sinners? That's an even bigger party. But everybody ought to give their life to Christ. And the more they give, we can have a block party. And we can celebrate and we can shout and shout the victory because you have given your life to Christ. There's a song that we like to sing when all of God's children get together for the time what a time, what a time. You may be lost. Sometimes we don't know we're lost. But if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you can't say with a guarantee that you're on your way to heaven, you are lost. But you're not so lost that God hasn't swiffered and swept for you. He has found you because the moment that you hear his voice, and you hear him knocking at your heart, he wants you to open the door. He's just secured you, and he can just save you right now. So we want to extend the invitation for you to come to Christ, to give your life to him, to become part of his precious jewels. Give your life to Christ, because Christ swiffers and he sweeps. The doors of the church are open. The praise team will come. They will sing a selection. And as they sing, contemplate. Give your life to Christ. Today, right now, come on.
bless you and we want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning we pray that something was said was edifying to your life and we hope that someone has given their life to Christ because Christ swiffers and he sweeps we pray God's continue richest blessings upon you as you go throughout this day and the rest of your week we thank you again for having First Baptist on your mind and pray that you will uh, come back next week and worship with us again. Let us receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God I say, you be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let every heart say amen.